I'm going to bring the meeting to order. Uh, are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? I've got two additions. Uh, the first is uh, Dan Noise has offered the town a gift of one of those little free library boxes. Okay. I'm uh, proposing to place it uh, at the uh, Brett on Legion Field. Uh, and we've got an agenda item for the relating to the oven coming up in the middle of the agenda, so it's like a good time to combine those two. Okay. Uh, the other thing we've got uh, is an interim update on the board on a request from the Green Mountain Byway to write a letter in support for uh, a request that they'd like us to make to uh, VTrans when they're repaving Route 15. Okay. Anything else? I have a ATV message to convey from Constituent B. Okay, anyone else? No. Uh, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of July 6th? <coughs> Michael. Yes. Thank you. That was uh, to set the tax rate, basically. Yeah. A short and simple meeting. So, so Motion, move second. Second. Any discussion? So, move that up, Matthew, and also second it. Sorry, they both moved at the same time. Yeah. No further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstain. Okay, let the record show Mike abstained. Uh, Rosemary is now here, she's out on vacation. Uh, we've got the budget report in front of us. It looks like to date, uh, obviously this is our fiscal year ending in July 1st. 103% uh, revenues in and reported, recorded, and our expenses are from the print. I guess it's 88% is that? We, th that's what's as it reported right now, okay. um, I expect by the end of August we'll be able to have a, a more true picture of. It'll be trued up. And yeah. For example, you sign you're signing a lot of orders tonight that quite a few of them apply to last fiscal year. Okay. So that probably be close to the hundred percent. Closer at the very least. Just very hard to read that print, but I think it's eighty eight percent as of that report. Yeah, we'll get down into the, yeah, that looks like 88%. We'll get down into the more of the specifics. And it wouldn't surprise me if this doesn't have our uh, reserve fund transfers taken out of it yet either. Okay. Rosemary usually does that at the end because for quite a few committees, uh, they're able to transfer in their unspent mm -hmm. uh, balance uh, into their reserve funds. So for committees with a setup like that, we really have to get, make sure that we're, we're trued up absolutely for uh, the end of the fiscal year before we then calculate how much they're gonna take out for uh, the reserve fund. So I can't give you exactly what percent it is, but it, it's gonna go higher than this. Um, I hope nobody's got any questions on that project because you probably need it. You did also get a couple of letters um, about uh, penalties and fees. Uh, you can choose to take action on them tonight, or uh, you can wait until those marries. I only have one from a Peter Cash. Okay. Uh, then you only got one. So okay. Um, okay. We'll we'll screen that up. Under current taxes to date, we're a little bit ahead, about 98% collected versus in the last couple of years running about 97.9. So we're just a little bit ahead. So that's pretty good. The delinquent tax report is here, all the delinquent taxpayers. And then the last item is that. Uh, Letter from Peter Taxwood. 
indicating he was at, at the penalty and the interest probably charged because it didn't get uh, his check was not cashed or he's indicating he dropped it in the slot but uh, if it was never cashed we probably never received it what would the board does the board want to take any action on this item or do you want to wait for rosemary i prefer to wait for rosemary Is there anything else on that you were aware of, Brian? No. Nope. And Public Works was Hugh going to be here tonight? Uh, Hugh is attending remotely. Oh, okay. So I will help him get started with this, but if Hugh is here and able to present. I don't know if we've got some good white noise in the background. So. All right. Hello. 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 Are you, are you, can you hear me? Sorry? I can hear you decently. Uh, we did all get your report <coughs> sent to us, but uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so we've been pretty busy. The, um, we performed a curtain drain installation over at the Historical Society um, per the request of Duncan. They've been getting some water in the basement in that building. So we installed a drain, which I, I guess had been talked about prior to my arrival. So we executed that, took care of that for them. Uh, we worked at the Welcome Center for Howard doing a few things. Um, that looks like it's taking shape. <clears throat> we have completed the first round of mowing roadsides and the pretty much everywhere uh, that we're supposed to. The guys have replaced, I think about seven culverts over the last month, different problematic ones that we've made notes of over the past year. Uh, we probably got another six or eight to do in the next 30 days where the guys are telling me we're replacing more culverts than they ever have. So I like to continue making sure that that and ditching is getting done. Um, <clears throat> we've been uh, continuing to ditch a little bit slower pace with the backhoe. We're uh, just finished out on River Road East uh, where we ditched and we put in a few culverts. Um, Brian, I guess you're gonna talk about the paving aspect. I don't really need to cover that. Uh, I can fill in um, about that. So uh, the we are requesting, we got updated, if you recall, we got the class two paving grant to cover uh, Plot Road. And uh, I think it was just to cover Plot Road. Uh, we had to get a new estimate from Hutchins, who had provided the original estimate, but since we had done the reclamation work on Block Road, uh, the funding had changed. The amount that had to be, the, the, the amount of work that we need to do has changed a little bit, uh, but also the cost of that work has risen. So we got a new estimate. It looks good from our end. We're asking permission from the state to not start the bidding process over again because we've already been through that before. Uh, and they have not yet granted us permission for that. But uh, that's where we're at with the paving grant. And uh, with your permission, assuming that the, the, the state makes go back up to bid, I'd like your permission to go up to bid, uh, write the bid document, go up to bid for it, use the state grants us permission to award this to the winner of the last time we went out to bid. <coughs> I, I'd like to just go with that, that they want the bid for this, just circumstances changed a little bit, they made the updates for us. I don't think they changed them enough, but I personally don't think they changed enough to warrant of starting over again with the bidding process. What's the board's pleasure to be uh, all comfortable with that drawing going out and read it, if that's what the state required? Yes. Yeah, okay. Just go ahead. Yeah. And signing with that, the state doesn't require it. Yes. 
Did we? Did we ever approve signing for that? Um, we, I suppose we didn't because we did have, we didn't have the grant at that point. That's right. I think that we kind of approved it in principle going out for the grant, but no, we didn't have the baby grant, so we wouldn't have made, we wouldn't have awarded them the contract. Well, we'll have our first work session meeting in a couple of weeks. Could approve it then. By then, you'd know either way, right? Yeah, I, I assume so. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I don't know yet. Okay. They won't come and pay us until end of September, October, anything. The if we're lucky. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the Snowmobile Club advised us that there's a bridge up Reservoir Road. Um, probably a half mile from Upper French that needs to be replaced. They <clears throat> are researching some grant opportunities for that. Um, I met with the fellow today to just talk about it. Um, it could be a seven, eight, ten thousand dollar project um, based on. They think the best route to go is concrete. Um, I believe that there's four or five camps uh, plus state land, plus I guess former A. Johnson land that are all beyond that bridge. Um, just kind of wanted to get the board's take on what our position would be on a project like this. Is that the wood plank bridge? Currently. Yes. What's board thoughts? That's, we do have a statutory requirement for class four or five way bridges in Coleman. We want to get an estimate? Well, what do you say currently? Why do you say currently? Are there talk about the type of material that would be used? Well, it, it was told to me that the best replacement would be concrete. Um, I don't know why that is. I didn't really get into it with him. I just kind of wanted him to tell me what he was looking for from the town so I could bring it up to you. Okay. Thanks. I might have a little bit of insight on that. I know that the uh, for fish habitat, they are preferring the cast concrete uh, that they can install with a natural bottom on them to most other alternatives, and especially if the alternative they're considering is a big old-fashioned culvert, uh, they're trying to replace with many of those precast concrete box culverts. Uh, but I'm not too familiar with that, with what with what's there underneath the wooden planks. Uh, you probably need to go up and check it out because, as I recall, that's ledge and it might be the typical box culvert for the bottom. We don't know if that would work there. You might not be able to set it. Yeah, I'll look at it. I just didn't know what our policy was. I mean, <clears throat> it's up there. It's on a class four. Technically, it benefits a snowmobile club and the five folks that, or six, seven folks that, you know, live up beyond there. I just didn't know what the town, what the policy said was when it came to what we needed, to, what we were obligated to do. So I think that's a good point. We should pull out that policy because we do have a class four road policy. It is, uh, needs, as the planning commission will tell us, uh, really needs to be updated but I think we need to be consistent in how we approach our requests to uh, upgrade class or maintain class four roads. I believe we do have a budget for it, and it's a modest one, but we do have a budget modest. Uh, 2,500 bucks. What was that? that it's only 2,500 bucks. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and our roads and bridges. Right. I, I 
believe our class four road policy makes reference to uh, the statutory requirements we have for bridges and culverts, and then basically no additional work other than providing uh, graph if, if anybody, you know, residents on that road wanted to use it. But um, yeah, we should review that and we should get some others. I'm not sure if the board would be inclined to spend $10,000 on the class four highway. My thought was if we wanted to get involved, I would reach out to the forester who handles that plot of land for the state and ask them what their plans are logging wise, um, just to see if, you know, there's any money there that they would put into it. Um, I would do that more as a service to the snowmobile club. Um, just doing that research. If that's okay with you guys, I can help them out in that sense. Yeah, put your hand out, but don't expect anything to win it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I wanted to bring that up. Um, so last year's budget, we had $6,000 earmarked for some guardrail improvements. Um, I met with the, I met with one, there's two guardrail folks in the, our area that do guardrails. One came out and gave me a quote uh, for two different spots on Upper French that are in dire need. Um, that quote fell within our budget. The other company um, was not interested in coming out and looking at it. I would like to know the board's feelings on moving forward with that and essentially it would be spending last year's money um, to get those improvements done. It's a safety issue at this point, just because the current guardrails are not very functional. Uh, I don't think we can do that because we don't know now where we're going to be at with the budget until Rosemary has completed the record signing record of all of the revenues and expenses. So we don't know if we even have that money right now. Okay. But you certainly have the money that's budgeted for the current year. Yep. I didn't know, Brian, how, when I only get, I, we didn't go out for an official um, RFP based on the new procurement policy. Um, if we go through all that rigmarole, it, probably won't even be a this year project. What are your thoughts? I think that, and I don't have the procurement policy in front of me, but I think that only having one person respond with a letter of interest, I don't think that we have to take it, but I think we can afford it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much are we talking? 6,000, just under 6,000. What did we budget? 6,000. For the board's pleasure. We can move on tonight. Authorize it. We budgeted for it. We need the work done. We've got someone lined up. Let's do it. Keep so moving. You need a motion. I'll make a motion. I don't think that's that pay the cardinal replacement. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Motion, we have a second. So what's the name of the company? Lafayette. 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 Okay. Yeah, there you go. So probably. I'll include that in the motion awarding it to Lafayette. <coughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Um, 
wanted to put a bug in your ear about utilizing um, up to six thousand dollars of this year's budget to replace our existing equipment trailer. Um, the current one is a homemade thing that we had built in house um, early two thousands, pretty rotted. Uh, the tires specifically say not for highway use. Um, I would like to uh, to replace that and look for a used trailer that would be good, but at least know that I could spend up to six thousand dollars of my budget. What's the uh, trailer used for? So it gets the in the winter time. It's loaded with the um, steam generating pressure washer and tank for frozen culverts. In the summertime, it hauls all of our culverts. And anytime we rent uh, a piece of machinery, we tend to haul it ourselves um, to save that 200 you know, plus dollars every time. So <clears throat> it's pretty widely used. And also in the summertime, it has the hydro seeder that it carries. Um, pretty much all the time uh, that falls around us when we ditch. So it's pretty used, it's used pretty regularly. Where would we get the money? It's, I can, it's, it's, I can do it within my budget. Where, what line items would you make up that difference of six thousand dollars? <throat> well, I saved a lot of money on salt this year. I had I used all of my budget from salt uh, from last fiscal year to I stocked up, and I still had uh, I probably added an extra fifty percent over what I normally spend on salt, uh, which equates to about. Twelve, thirteen thousand dollars. Um, <throat> we are really we have more sand than I think we'll need for the next two years. Um, so it's a pretty small amount of money compared to what we've pre-planned for quantity-wise for our um, materials going into winter time. Let's save it from previous budget here. Let's see where we come in at with uh, end of year numbers. Put that on the screen. I wish. Good idea, man. I wasn't looking for a decision tonight. I just wanted to put that out there. If there's other items that I wish to come down the time to compile them, sounds like. Okay, anything else? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to talk briefly about, so currently the policies for class road, four road um, material states that 75 yards per household is available um, for folks who will maintain their own class four road. We've had a request from the residents at the class four section of Sinclair, um, there's four of them looking for 300 yards of material. I only have a hundred um, of the gravel that we produced in our own pit last year. So my question is, do we want to supply, the, do we want to suspend the program or do we want to give them the hundred yards that I have and bring them 200 from NATO's, uh, what's your pleasure? What's keeping you from producing that other 200 yards? We just haven't been into that pit this year. Um, haven't met with M. Shaw. I put everything kind of on hold because for a minute there it was a hot topic. Uh, we expanding, what are we doing in the current pit? So it's just been sitting there dormant which has been fine by me because we're actually able to go out and do our 
day-to-day -day activities and make some headway. Um, so we can open the pit if we have to, um, to produce it. But I kind of got the impression a couple months ago that we weren't moving in that direction this year. I mean, they are entitled to that. That is something we have in our policy. Uh, what uh, it is not actually in our current policy. It is something the board has honored in the past. Okay. It, it was in a former uh, classical road policy, but it is not in the current classical road policy. Although historically we have continued to honor when you say former, where was that? I couldn't remember the year that that was passed, uh, but I, a prior class four road maintenance policy. So, so there's another one that's in effect right now? The, the current one that we've been operating under for the last, I want to say it was 2013. <laughs> Was what our current class four road policy was written. And it doesn't? It does not. But the board has continuously honored yeah. providing gravel, uh, making modifications when uh, we were in violation with Amtron. We had to close the pit for a period to suspend the program. Uh, it, it is a well established practice of the board, but it is not part of it. Yeah, it was a precedent that we had set. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to be <coughs> clear that it wasn't actually okay. there. We could give them 100 yards and tell them the day, actually. Yeah, we could give them 100 yards. Um, to King's point, we can open up the pit, process out the other 200, or if it's not the policy, we don't have to authorize it. We ought to at least authorize the yards and uh, give that to them. What's the cost of the 200 yards? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it'll be uh, 3,200 bucks. Thank you. And if it's not the policy, I guess. It's not stipulated or stated there, but uh, it was always practice that it was up to the land owners uh, to truck the material as well. We would not truck it for them. Correct. That's just the cost of material there on their own trucking. What's well, board's pleasure? Yes, I give one of your Motion. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion, second. Any other discussion? See none, all those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Go ahead, you. I didn't even hear the motion. <laughs> there was a motion uh, made and passed, seconded and passed, uh, giving them the 100 yards that we currently have. Okay. Anything else? Um, when they ask, what about the other 200? What am I telling them? Tell them we don't have it right now. Okay. Um, the only other thing I had to talk about was Scribner Bridge, but I guess we still have another 30 days, Brian, before we're going to move forward and just fix that end of it. I've got an update on the roads, <coughs> the rocky roads that uh, I was getting very inclined. Uh, my episode. So if you want to hang around a couple minutes, you uh, we'll loop back in and you'll have an opportunity. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, the culverts that you're replacing, you have access to the uh, the inventory that we had done. Uh, some number eight. 14. Yep. Uh, okay. So you know where the worst ones were. Yep, and I found most of them this spring when I saw holes appear in the ground yep. in the road. <laughs>
Anybody got any questions for you? Sorry to hear about your son, you. Thank you. Hopefully we'll be out of here tomorrow. That's going well with that. Okay. Uh, report. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. You are you still there? Yeah. Um, you, sorry. I'm not sure what you did for the um, Alexander work down at Mill Park. I can't hear you. What did you say? He's asking what work you had done down at the uh, Welcome Center. Oh, well, we backfilled all the concrete that was poured, um, took care of that. So I haven't heard from Howard lately. I'm not sure what uh, the next step is, but uh, we've done everything he's asked us to do. And looks like they're ready to build or do whatever. We've I've done everything he wanted. And uh, so I am not part of any hang up that might come up. I think he was going to ask you to drop some trees in that vicinity, but um, yeah, I haven't. I talked to him as recently as a week ago when he asked to backfill, and he didn't mention any trees. Okay, thanks, you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else got any questions? If not, thank you, Hugh. Thank you. The Racial Justice Committee report, and I'm sure Eric is still in here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, recently I attended a Memorial County Planning Commission meeting, a subcommittee actually, they got to their diversity, equity, inclusion committee going on, and they wanted to listen to some other groups around the county, and I talked to them about, you know, getting some coordination between different groups in the county, and also, you know, partnering over maybe some, you know, some combination of economic development and marketing, and, you know, our areas, you know, values and attractiveness of the area to kind of cast a further net than just here for inspiring business development, you know, I'd say higher, so whatever it takes. Uh, and they, you know, they did a lot of listening, I'm gonna do some more listening, but I'm I'm in connection with the one you chaired that committee and I'll probably hear from them again ask about that. Um, I went up to the school today, met with the principal about promoting the anti-racism and written expression contest and making out a couple of bits there and have some information to the school. Um, we've been short to members for a couple months now. Um, thanks to Brian for posting those vacancies. And we've got, I think, five potential people who are going to show up for our next meeting that will, thanks for explaining that, that will uh, interview and make recommendations to the board here for the next meeting. Um, and they also make some people Um, <laughs> uh, is there anything other for a report or for talking about the motion we made in our last meeting? Or is that or is something else you want to hear from us now? I think for this part, it was just a report out of what you guys have been doing. Yeah, doing. and we met in person for the first time uh, ever uh, mm -hmm. last time. It was great to we see a lot of faces around the table and talk to people, and it's certainly much better way to talk about things that I know we're seeing a lot less contentious we are than what we are and shit like that. Um yeah that's that's what we for the last meeting. There are a couple of items later on our agenda that we'll be seeing oh, okay is that what we're gonna okay. Yeah. okay gotcha yeah so is there anything else that? I mean I don't know if you guys heard about the, the real banner and what happened with that over last week and the week before it got taken down. Nobody really knew about it. The Justice Will and, and Ken just didn't know about it because it was damaged. Um, and then Dean was earlier got it fixed and put it back up for the 21 days. So, yeah. That was the only thing that was going on. So, actually, that's the only thing. Anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you all. Uh, your report, Count Assessor. Uh, the first piece of it is the the Count Assessor position that we do. Our contract with Nemrick is up, uh, and so we need someone to do maintenance on the ground with us, uh, kind of as soon as possible. We've got a couple errors and omissions that need to be uh, completed uh, that we know about, and we're only going to get one. Uh, 
Uh, we are lucky in that the uh, proposal that we sent out most recently, uh, we got more responses to our proposal than I believe Hyde Park and some of the other communities that have been surfing about the same time as we are. Um, you know, I did my best to try and chase down any possible leads and uh, got some assistance from contacts that we had throughout the state. So we were able to thankfully generate uh, two proposals. Uh, so I, I'm really pleased that we were able to generate two. Uh, my recommendation is that we engage in a contract with uh, Terry Stevens, who is currently also doing the assessment work for Morrisville. So she's familiar with the area, she's familiar with memory, uh, is highly recommended, and is willing to do the job one day a week, uh, the same as Robin did. Um, do we have copies of their? Proposal. I give you a little bit more detail about it. Uh, it is it's one day a week, uh, fifty-five dollars. They both the same. Uh, the other, the alternative proposal was I believe thirty-one thousand hmm. dollars. What is that? Kind of that too? The hours would be a little bit different, and it would include a little bit more uh, field work than Terry's. I think that Harry's familiarity with the area and everything else outweighs it. And uh, this would be our, our best option. Did they submit it in writing? I can share more details with you. But the one you can submit it. So what we would not be getting is that this neither of the proposals is uh, the We've been in the budget discussion, we'll have to compare contributing back to that. Always a pleasure to uh, go with the recommended proposal. Right. I think we both made it. Did we jump at the fifty thousand? We did. Yes. Uh, we knew that we were going to be paying more for this. Uh, the our negotiations with Nemeric, we weren't able to complete them, but Nemeric. For very similar work, never can sign high part for thanks to my brother. <clears throat> give you an idea. What were they doing with the uh, We had an annual contract with them, so they were doing it for them for $35,000 a year, including the contract. And Spencer would also do field work with Terry, will not. But why it's fifty five dollars? But um, I have a great deal of confidence in her doing the office work and the maintenance that is most essential to doing the next one. So, how will we get the field work? We're going to have to continue to work. We're not going to be able to sign the carry and just not worry about it again. But that field work, we might be able to ramp. This would be a one year contract for $55 an hour. 
uh, I am also working on, um, in the meantime, reevaluating the weight limit on the bridge. Um, but that's kind of a third avenue that we're, we're also pursuing. Okay. Any more? No, no, no. Okay, we're getting further questions. Mm -hmm. uh, oven committee. Okay. So, uh, the oven committee has an opportunity to apply for a spark grant from the Vermont Community Foundation. I believe it has been speaking to that a little bit more. Yeah, um, so we have any dates for every Monday in July and August, and our rough budget is around $2,000 to operate. Um, and so I was um, looking for your um, approval to apply for this part grant for the $2,000 um, to operate and then to use the donation money for skating dates and whatever comes on the for the winter time. Um, it's through the Vermont Community Foundation that received grants from them before for the oven. Um, but this is kind of a specific grant um, based in um, inclusion and accessibility and community building. Any uh, match requirements? No. It was for his pleasure. How could we possibly say no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I make a monkey. Did you need a lot of support with that or or are you looking for just to get there? um yeah I do actually I'm not from the board particularly but if it came from the board I think that would be really powerful. Um and so maybe I'll be in on you. <laughs> well, I can't rail on behalf of the board, but I can I can, I can arm it into the motion perhaps. If, yeah. if you'd like that Yeah, that'd be great. I'll add that into it. That's a friendly motion, not a warning in, but a friendly <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Friendly. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And you're ready to grab. <clears throat> All those in favor, signify the same aye. 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 Opposed? And also on the same note, we got Dan Noyes with a proposal for a library bond. Hi, thanks for having me today. I um I built this new library and uh I talked to that earlier today about uh attaching it for the folks at the pizza oven there. Um and just wanted to get your approval before we put it up there. Um it's roughly two feet wide, probably three feet tall. Eric moved to paint it. I built it three body, three narrow lumber, one inch screws. It's not going anywhere. So you're a couple of lag bolts right into the things. It's pretty good. We got books. Everybody's got books in one place. So it will be adequately stocked for sure. Which, you know, especially tonight, we were talking about it earlier. You know, you got family salmon, pizza oven, dinner. I don't have some books available. So. Okay, what's well, the board's pleasure? Great. Is that a great motion? That's a great motion, yes. <laughs> I think it's the last chance to install the new library box. We have a great motion. We have a second. A wonderful second. A wonderful second. Any more discussion? Do you want to add location to the motion? Don't put it on the road. <laughs> I don't know the exact location, but then the general facilities stuff. Uh, I coordinate with the whole server. Uh, that sounds great. So it's not another way. Hey, Dan, do you know who, who, who built the one in Hyde Park? That looks I built the one in Hyde Park. I used to build one of them. The one that's in front of the. Uh, uh, no. Oh, the one in front of the library. That's nice. That's in front of the courthouse. Yeah, that's nice. Your um, box doesn't look like that. <laughs> I passed that. I'm like, who made that? That's amazing. Yeah, it's really oh nice. Nice um, job. Uh, nice to uh, nice nice. build the one of her sturdiness. It's like, okay, let's have a cedar table roof. Because I have a cedar table roof. It's very beautiful. They're still cute. If you want to buy a house. I don't know. 
They have two in Hyde Park, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right by the library, right by the courthouse. Well, yeah, one um, up at North Hyde Park. And then I don't know. Oh, yeah. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say no. They say no. Aye. 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 Those opposed. Thank you, Dan. Uh, update on the status of the welcome center. So the ten hours at your welcome center is progressing. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good for that. Um, yeah, we, we've got quite a lot of uh, material acquired. We're able to get a lot of uh, lumber that we needed from uh, Doug Moldy uh, and uh, some other little resident we've been purchasing from and uh, Country Home Center over in uh, Marshall. So that, that's progressing well. With that, Mike Patch? Mike Patch provided uh, some of this also. Um, the, the Let's see. The Welcome Center dedication uh, is set for August uh, 21st and 22nd. 22nd. 22nd is the actual, like I think 21st is when our contract is up and 22nd is the um, Everything's on, on track for that. It looks good. Uh, I think grouping, everything is going to come through. Um, you know, right now we're still on our revised scope budget. Uh, the Let's see, I think we're going to be completed in time. Uh, you know, if, if as things are get closer, you know, we'll start talking about some of the uh, secondary and additional items that we might be able to complete. Um, we've got Nat and Lisa Cruz and others have been coordinating around what the presentation is going to look like, what the event's going to look like. Uh, we're going to be collecting some pilot plans from here and other places we're trying to beautify the area in whatever ways we can if we're not able to do the complete landscape in there. Uh, um, you know, we're interested in uh, doing as much of the, the proposed mural that we'd like to try and get completed. You know, we've got a lot of additional items that we'd like to do, and we're still looking like we're going to come in for a reduced scope, at least under budget and give us some room to do some of those additional items. Hopefully before August, but if not before August, we'll mm -hmm. uh, be completed with that. But we have uh, requested the second segment of uh, the funds. So it'll be another $15,000 coming in. Uh, that'll go pretty quickly uh, when we're starting with uh, labor, uh, like the, the main construction labor. Uh, there is another small piece for public works. I uh, was helping to dig the holes for uh, the support beam, the posts. But we're coming up on the end of what we're doing in public works. Uh, I think that's pretty well covered where we're at. That's a big question. Did you talk to Howard about our concern in the last? Yes, I have. Okay. And what is he going to come before the board? Or? He is, uh, and you know, I had said I had kind of shared the concerns with the board. Um, yeah, but it did. It seemed like the board wanted more, a little bit more progress and to look and have a little more confidence about how the final project was going to land before we got too deep into those discussions. Okay. So uh, he had offered to be here tonight. It wouldn't be necessary if that was part of the discussion. Part of the discussion. Okay. Anybody got any questions? Um, <coughs> yeah, I, I have a question about the support beams. You didn't mention anything about when I asked about what they have outstanding, so a little bit of a red flag for me. Um, and I just would like to state that the 21st is five weeks away, which is not long. Uh, so I'm sorry to raise the stress level, but no pressure. You know, you feel like you're on stress. I believe that we're on stage. I'm listening to these guys, all the good things. Uh, but do we have a group behind it? Howard has plans for that. He <laughs> believes that uh, he believes that he has the people who need it to complete. Okay. okay. 
Um, is that a laser of people? Yes, he has got some laser plant there. Uh, the last piece, um, I'm actually not going to be in town for the uh, dedication ceremony. So uh, Lisa Cruz and Greg are going to be finishing that. Uh, well, Matt and other volunteers are going to do my best uh, to help set it up for success. Okay. Any further questions? Brian? Not? Okay. Thank you, Brian. Uh, funding for racial justice being. All right. So uh, this is a little bit more expensive than just the banner. This also includes the flag that we were talking about also, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so uh, some of the public messaging and visibility that the Racial Justice Committee is working for and working on. Um, they've got a few of these things set up with the, the toll uh, that the village was able to install at uh, the village green and the new banner policy that the village has. Uh, so the Racial Justice Committee, I understand, is coming to us to ask about. Uh, Helping pay for some of the things that they'd like to display. The current display that we can is on loan from uh, Real, which is uh, a county or just, well, yeah. they're, they're coming. Uh, so it's a, a, a county wide organization uh, working on similar issues. Uh, but uh, our committee would like a little bit of funding to, for their own issues. I don't think we have a question to build. Yeah, oh, we're going to hear. Are you talking about Rachel Justice people? Well, they're okay. asking for some funding on some banner. Oh, I thought there was a little discussion about it, something about it. And he had this motion to talk about the vision for the whole committee. Maybe oh, that's that's the next oh, yeah. next thing on the agenda. Okay, so which, who is going to give the, the report here? Uh, Eric? It is is like a summary. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we're. We got approval from the Bell's trustees to put up a progress pride flag on that poll for Pride Week at the end of August. Um, I think if we need 60 bucks to purchase that. And then uh, some folks on a, are going to get together and volunteer to create a big banner that represents Johnson Rich just me. And they were they want to get some materials donated but want to be another 40 bucks to dig up some more materials to finish that off. So as you just for Hundred bucks for not more than a dollar for those two things. What what uh, funding resources have you guys been able to acquire to date? Um, Any fundraising materials or yes for donation? Donation fundraising. Okay. Sports pleasure. You're you're asking not over a hundred bucks. That's right. And your request is just for the money. Are you? So I just want to be clear what you're asking. That's for the money for the for the for the, for the, for the signage that we've already got to create ourselves, and then we're just put the flag up on the green for Pride Week. Well, probably thank you. Um, at the end of August, which which the village has already approved, you know, for that purpose. Okay. Okay. Um, How's the essay going? Is I know I kind of briefed on that earlier, but I thought that was going to be the last funding. Is that in the next item? Is that in the next one? Oh, oh, no. It could be. I, I, I guess he was just, where are you going with this? Uh, I was just wondering mobilization, the, you know, how things are. Yeah, we've got the Lamar Sword community do a, a group doing outreach on that. And like I said, I stopped in the school, or did I? I've had a hard time getting in with the principal of the two schools with this. Up there, but that's happening this week, and I put it on the front porch forum. But I don't know, not a lot of bites so far, so we'll probably be we might be extending the date, their deadline out of progress first until we can get in contact with more kids. I think a lot of people imagine that the summer programs we have hundreds of kids up there, and I stopped it today, I saw maybe 20. So I can reevaluate the length of this conference based on that number. 
and then the home study folks are not reached in way to put it out too, but um, yeah. Good question. Is there, anybody? Is there any fundraising plan moving forward? Or well, we raised, a, or or we raised some money for the for the rich budget cost. We had dollars from the store center. Um, but no, we have, we didn't we haven't planned fundraising. I guess we were here to talk about this last time. <clears throat> but did, I, I remember um, it sounds um, great um, support of this for sure. Um, and, it, and when we did talk at the May 17th meeting, Eric, you said there was goodwill on the part of the fundraising. I think this is a great opportunity for it. Um, this is uh, a pretty light lift. Um, and I think it's really doable and a little bit of that direction. What was that last part? I would encourage that direction. Yeah, right. It came up in the in the in the meeting. People suggested that in the relationships in the meeting that we had. And um, I think the consensus of the committee was that we will at times do some fundraising, but it was important for the town show supports for these efforts and the things that they direct us to do. And, you know, we're going to talk about the vision next, you know, as a five point plan. One of the points in our direction was to do messaging, public messaging, and outreach. Um, and this is one of the ways we thought it was to do that. And so, um, some support from the board was that we were looking for on that. And then, you know, and I also think that, you know, if you're going to, you know, if your charge is to combat systemic racism, you can use systemic change. And charitable organizations, you know, that's 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 individual efforts. And we have a lot of those in our community. A lot of people are involved in anti-racism work and charitable work and trying to do things to change society through individual efforts. But our charge is to do this through municipal government, um, not through charitable outreach. So I understand the case, I understand the point of this taking the account. Okay, and it's kind of a mixed message because the last time you came here, you did say there is goodwill on the committee's part to do fundraising. And you're saying, on one hand, that the committee is willing to do that, but also that it's not. A, oh, I, I said there's goodwill in the community or on among people. There's lots of people that have volunteered. There's, there's, goodwill, the, there's goodwill on the committee's part to do fundraising. This is what you said when you came here last week among last. So I'm supportive of your efforts for sure. Um, and I, I also have pointed out that in the past and, and have made the point at that time that um, there are a lot of people in the committee that are doing um, really valuable, really essential work um, that are um, doing it with municipal support, with taxpayer support, and doing funding. But there are no committees sure. that come to us that don't do any funding. Yeah, just that. Um, I'll give you an example of, of, of the um, Conservation Commission that just did a, a $5,000 project to install um, uh, wheelchair accessibility to the Beard uh, Recreation Park, um, and which is really like a tangible thing you can do oh. to um, increase inclusivity for the community and to make um, this is a, a, a more attractive and exclusive place for everyone. A really great project. And um, in fact, they created the whole beard parcel for us without any taxpayer dollars. So for us to stand in front of the town meeting next year and say, you know, we, we want to give, we've given this funding to this committee and they haven't had to do fundraising, but you folks over here did have to do fundraising for your projects. That's a, um, well, it's just something I'm not going to do, I guess. I'll do. Sure, but I would say that, I don't know, there's black dots and black flags up, you know, places and those are not purchased by the town, but they were bought by individual donations. There's, did you fundraise for those? But some, did you fundraise? No, no, no. Okay. But I'm just saying there's lots of goodwill. I, I get you on that. Yeah, and I get your but I think it's important to remember <clears throat> the greater context of this committee, which is 
under a year old, barely a year old. You know, the conservation commission is what two decades old, two decades old. I mean, it's, it's, it's got a very strong foundation and a strong membership and is on very solid footing. Restoration Justice Committee is new, it's building its foundation from the ground up. And it's gone through many members. You know, it was under the jurisdiction of two boards, now it's under one board, it's changed chairs. So it's it's still finding its footing. And um, most of us have been other on other committees that do be fundraising, and you know the incredible amount of time, effort, and people power it takes to do fundraising. So I don't see the work is not on this committee, but um, but I, I do go to all the meetings, and I I think that there is a majority that do want to do fundraising fundraising eventually, but right now they're still trying to get you know basic basic things in order and and certain you know basic tasks completed. So I think a greater kind of what's going on. Um, I would like to actually. Um, I have a few thoughts about this. One is that any committee that is a new committee usually gets their meetings before they ask for a budget line in the budget. I believe um, they show they show the output of the committee and the value that brings. I'm not suggesting there's not value. I'm just that. Um, aside from that, uh, personally, I would gladly give more than you're asking to the committee. And I've said it before, and I'm still going to say it. I'll say it every time you ask for money. I personally will give you money. Um, I understand it's not what you're looking for. If you're looking for a state from the town. Uh, but I will always make the statement that I'll give you money. So I will. Um, this is the report. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me very well, Jackie. If you have to say that out loud, I mean, I need it. I say what I need. Um, in terms of flag, my bill is free. All for it. I am all for it. From a staff perspective, staff a personal perspective, I would like to get a little bit of flag, but I would like to get it free. Are there any 
I said I was going to say that each committee is a little bit different because of the nature of the committee and how the funding sources come from them. But uh, all of our committees or commissions, they get some kind of a grant for fundraising. Well, I'm talking about grabbing a check and then out on the grant. Yeah, you got your money right there. Uh, 
I didn't have the full presentation at the table to say this is what we will need. So there's been a hang up as far as the answer basic case goes, but they did approve the inclusivity statement. So I plan to um, make the thing as it will get pinned up, bring it to the next conservation commission committee meeting and say, here it is, like here's final product, and hopefully get the people then community um, and village um, adopted statement on our PM. And the third thing, just to report, is that I've been in touch with the library about hosting an anti racist story time for kids uh, roughly age three to seven, I think is the target age. Um, so those are some efforts to be part of. Thank you. Thank you. We have got a work What I said, yeah, please. So far. My name is Lockheed Wortham. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I've been in Jackson for uh, 10 years. Living here, living here, living here. Uh, taught at Johnson State two years before that. Um, so that's a justice, right? Uh, sociology, uh, psychology, anthropology. Okay. Um, I love Johnson. Okay. I've worked, I'm going to go all over the country. I don't know the facts or the Why did I retire in Johnson? I love it. Okay? No problem with it. So I don't know. Oh, racial justice. Oh, obviously, I'm a person of color. <laughs> well, oh, okay. I have zero problems in that. Zero problems in Lamar County. Zero problems in Lamar. Okay. Love me. Okay. Ah. Uh, since I was 16 years old, I've been involved in uh, fighting for racial justice. And it's not, I didn't have to be, but I got involved, you know, civil rights movement and all that stuff, you know. NAACP, Youth Council. I became the president of the largest NAACP Youth Council in the United States when I was 17. Okay? Representative the NAACP to see President Eisenhower from California. I was very, 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 very involved. I had degrees in interracial education, like a PhD. I know a little bit about race, okay? I was surprised and shocked when I heard about this kid being brought. I heard the actual was, what is the problem in Johnson? I've never seen it in 10 years. Missed it. What is going on? Oh, somebody did some like some, somebody did something here. So I haven't heard that kind of stuff over the years, you know. But you know, for the whole boom, you get together with the people who cause the problem, like I've done for years and years and years. You go to the races, go by the plan, whatever. Bring them in. It was disgusting. The guy's gonna burn down the town. Bring them in, read them, talk with them. I've done this for years. And at the end of the meeting and discussion, the racist, whoo! I mean, I've been doing this a year. That's what I wrote. Somebody burned a flag. Let's talk to them. You know, don't want to start to ignore them. Anyway, I don't understand the purpose of this committee. I don't understand the rationale for it. I don't see the need for it. That's not a Thank you, Audrey. Um, I guess now's the time to talk about what is the mission and vision. Thanks, thanks, John. I understand. I understand. And, and you know, I'm going to speak briefly to the doctor's comments and, and that, you know, I think there's different opinions to the degree of racism or lack thereof, which is kind of racist in society. But the fact remains that here, Johnson in the rural northern Vermont, it's a very, very, very warm place. And the future of population demographics says this, we're not going to grow if it continues to be that way. And so maybe you know part of the purpose of this committee isn't necessarily that there's a problem, but the problem is there's a lack of diversity and sharing the fact that some of like often has experience of these had for 10 years is oh, so that message needs that message needs to get out. I think a big part of what we can do is marketing, I think. You know, 
people of color don't move here because it's a very white and rural area. And, and historically, people of color have not done well in very white rural areas. And to send a message that this place is different, I think is a phenomenal thing to do. Uh, and so that is you know part of our charge as well. I think it's not just that there's you know a giant problem, it's being proactive. Okay, so we're going to come, please. This is not going out yet, but I have to uh, help diversify not only Johnson but the state, how to bring in more people of color of different social economic. Well, not okay, of color. People like to be with people who are quite similar to them, okay, which means uh, lifestyle. Someone to the economic level, okay, in the religion, whatever. But if you try to attract people here who are dissimilar just because of their color, that's crazy. The important thing here is not color, it's lifestyle. And you you have to go after I have some money. You have to go after people who are looking for jobs all over the country, who are educated. Okay, education is number one. You need educated people who, by the way, educated people cost more money. You know that? A black professor costs more than a white professor because they can go almost anywhere. There's a demand for them. Okay, so to attract people here who are qualified and educated, we're going to say, what about black people? I can do anything if they can. You know? You have to tell them people are friendly here. We can break They're very, very friendly. They don't break the car and all that stuff. <laughs> it's wonderful. The, the schools are generally good, but there are a lot of good reasons to easy ways to attract people to come here with a little bit of effort. Is that it? Very good. Really, to bring it. Okay. But working with someone like her. Working with the governor in the state, with the governor, who's supposed to be okay, attracting my eyes. This is very good. This is a rest of the plan. The plan is go after people who have a simple lifestyle. You don't go after low income people. That's not good. You bring them here, they're poor. What the hell good is that? You know, you make them embarrassed. You know, you increase the negative stereotype of white people. You don't want poor white people here. You went similar or better. Okay? I'm really serious. Wherever I've worked, with a lot of places, I've always known not only do I have to be that's good. Okay? And those there are a lot of people out there. And they will come here. Just come here. If, if, if they feel that, oh, and they know that, but a lot of them very good things. You know? Good schools, nice neighborhoods, you know, but you only have to go after people from a similar lifestyle as you. And those are perfectly comfortable with you, like I do. You know, that's not. I get the character of the first neighborhood we work on. So, um, so one of the things, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think it's time for the kind of conversation I was thinking about, but one of the things I mentioned before was that when this committee was created, there were these five charges, the list that we were charged of doing, which were educational opportunities for the community to learn about issues of racism and social justice, public displays to express support of racism and social justice, policies and procedures to promote racism and social justice. Engage with community residents to continue the conversation on issues of racial construction and coordinate with local partners and stakeholders to further the conservation of social justice. We were thinking, like, what, they, what were they thinking when they said all of those things? Mm -hmm. the board. And obviously, what do we think? You know, and I think, you know, big picture education opportunities means speakers and workshops, right? And um, public displays means banners, flags, websites, social media, export, marketing. And then, um, uh, you know, coordinating with local partners and stakeholders like like Rio and uh, like LCPC, employers, schools, businesses. 
Um, and also, you know, um, you know, I think there's a big thing that combines, you know, talk about LCPC, and what I'll do is talk about, and, you know, marketing for like, you know, reaching beyond the borders of the state to let people know what we have here as far as tourism, businesses, you know, education opportunities. There's a, there's a lot going on here. And, you know, you know I'll, I'll mention, I don't know if it hurts to do the website yet again, as the people's point of first contact with their town. Um, and I don't know if, if you look around at other similar sized towns in Vermont, ones that, you know, might have a little bit more going on economically, they know some similar strains of those things they have available as far as what they put out in the world. Um, so anyways, those are the things that when we were thinking, that's what we think of. And we're like, is that in line with what you five think of when you think about what this group's supposed to do? Are those are the kinds of things that you want us, the path you want us going down? I, I'm curious what each of you think about that. But it would have to be each because as a board, we've not had the opportunity to really discuss it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, I personally can think of, uh, you know, there, there's opportunity. Well, first of all, let me say one of the problems we have is I'm not sure how a committee of your size is going to be able to change the trend that's happening in Vermont where we can't attract people. We just we can't even keep people here. And, and we have a losing population. So we're losing constantly. Not this year, for the first year in 50 years. Yeah, but you wait until they lose to a couple of winners. <laughs> <laughs> that's my theory. It was to get out of the city. You know, you're sure. This is the first year in two decades where the population went up. Um, but, you know, something I've always thought is, an opportunity is uh, all of these art um, structures we have around the village for putting things of art on them is get a, a, a black artist and profile them and, and let them put their works on all these, you know, uh, what do you call them? podiums. Yeah. We have them all over the village and they got nothing on them. I mean, it seems like it's a waste that we're not capitalizing on that. Uh, and you know that would send a very positive message of, of blacks in our area or communities. Uh, another one that uh, you know, and, and maybe I'm talking personally, but if you get a speaker in here who's going to be a white woman lecturing me on what it is like to walk in a black man's shoes, you know, I'm probably not going to go. It would be more interesting. I don't know if any of you have been to the Stone House in Brownington, but uh, the founder of that was a black man who uh, was born and raised in Corinth, Vermont, and uh, he was the first black in the United States that got a college degree. He got it from Middlebury, and he settled in Brownington and he established the school there. He was the, uh, the master of it. And uh, it's, it's a museum there now, but uh, it's, it was an executive director of it. You know, she might have some real interesting things to talk about. You know, somebody that was in Vermont, and it's a it's a very prominent black man that did good in this state. You know, things like that. That's that's where I'm at. But that's your really, thing. That opens up new ideas for us. Thank you. But I guess. I'll, well, you I just had a follow-up question because is that when you said um, you would not be inclined to go to a workshop where a white woman talks about being a black man, were you referring to me? No, it's no. just, yeah, just, I don't want to. It's hard to I it's hard to Yeah. I mean, that's not what I would be looking for is, is being lectured to me. That's just me personally. I think you were just saying, like, for instance. Okay, okay. I I guess because, like I said, the board is not an opportunity to talk this through that maybe each of us individually can get a little bit of insight. Yeah, I mean, that gave us a nice place to do the front door. Okay, I think we're going to be One of the things that, you know, has kind of been really resonated with me recently is I saw a Facebook post, and Facebook post was on the Confederate flag. And it was about how un-American the Confederate flag is. And Eric, I've produced it multiple 
times about how high schoolers are having around with Confederate rat flag don't actually understand. They think it's American. They don't actually understand it. it kicks ass or, well, it's not. It's actually anti American. And like, I think that there is value in educating uneducated people on um, symbolism and what those symbols actually really mean. Um, because those are certainly prevalent in our community. And I don't think it's about hate. I like to assume it's not, like you like to assume it's not. Um, but you know, do they actually know what that means? We'll do me with it. Whenever I say, as I say, a good old boy going by with a better flag, I wait to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they probably don't even put the, the irony, right? Of that. <laughs> yeah, good for you. <laughs> But I think that's like that's a really important area of one that we have in that education. Does the town have a precedent for doing educational activities like that? I guess the library does not good. Library would be a good one. We did do historical society is good, and we did do a couple of events uh, before there was a racial justice committee. Uh, just select board brought people in. You know, guest lecture. Uh, but yeah, I think again, to get a, a, this is a, a new committee working with something like the library would be great because they've got the network to uh, provide more of assistance. But like, yeah, there's this assumption that you're doing the work, and there's an assumption that we're paying someone to come and speak. I don't think that's a great assumption. Like maybe it's a matter of bring it to the schools and say, you know, I found this really cool um, curriculum around um, what Confederate flags actually mean that would engage the kids. Like, here, if you're interested, like, don't force it down anyone's throat, but just, you know, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we shouldn't box ourselves in and talk to us speakers or presentations. Mike? Alfie and I were talking today. Remember Alfie about common ground? Mm -hmm. You know, that we're always, we're a lot closer to each other really than we are further apart. And they just a few issues that really divide us. Uh, I happened to think uh, a couple of years ago, my wife and I went to a bed and breakfast. And, uh, you know, when you have your breakfast, you're in a real small dining room. And uh, luckily or unluckily, I wore my hearing aids that day. And because I had my hearing aids on, it seems like I'm an eavesdropper, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just hearing how normal people talk. Well, I'm sitting there and there's all of these couples, there's older people, there's these three sisters that met at this uh, bed and breakfast every year. They've done it for like 20 years or whatever. There were all kinds of a mix of people. And I could hear their conversations. And and I just felt compelled. And I said, Would you mind, folks, if I said something? And they all kind of look at me kind of incredulously that I'm going to just speak to a bunch of people I don't even know. And I said, you know, and I, I prefaced it with my hearing aid business again. And I said, I could hear everybody's conversations. And I said, the difficulty we have in the world, I says, when, when I think of all of your conversations, I says, we are all so close. You know, it's just too bad we couldn't kind of get over the hump, you see, and get along with everybody, you know? And uh, I always try to get along with my neighbor, you see? I always practice kind of the golden rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I try to do that. And I try to be... Uh, the same with everybody. I think everybody has a has a reason. Uh, they should be heard, right? And like Avi and I were talking about, that you can find common ground with people, especially the story that you told me uh, about the KKK member and the Black Panther, and uh, how people can come together by talking to each other. You see, and that is the key. And, and these words that people throw out all the time, you know, racist, you're a racist, or you're a racist. 
or whatever. Badge is just a word that turns people right off. You know, it, it's a very trite word today, and it's used to marginalize people. You see, we've got to get away with it, get away from it, and we've got to find a way to, to get common ground with everybody. So how we do that, I do not know. But I try to find common ground with people, unless they call me a turd or something, you know. But but I still let that brush out me too. You know, it, it's uh, it, you're better off to turn the cheek sometime and put up your fist. So again, I don't know where we go from here. Evan? Uh, I guess at this current time, uh, you probably caught on to it earlier. I'd like to see a little bit more fundraising because I think that's engaging in the community. That's all social and things. The tax I get that it's a young committee. Uh, that's a little strapped with people, but there's obviously something that can be done. I mean, the community government just passed their approval on a grant right before this. So, um, <coughs> Uh, yeah, good. Like Eric said, that's not all talking about that. But, and that's great. That's just kind of what I wanted to hear. And I agree with all the stories. What did you disagree with? I, I know what to do about it. About uh, <laughs> I, I, it's the same thing I say frequently. You're not going to call me a turd, are you? No, 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 no. <laughs> about this anti racism stuff is that, is that America is not divided. America is not, you know, fighting the war against each other. But America is being divided. There are people in forces, politicians, and media that are pitting us, us all against each other. Well, I agree with you 100%. And so, and so but you're uh, you know, listen to people, talk to people, you know, and fight those forces that divide us. I think it's important for me to do. I think the anti racist efforts are the ones that are right to do that. They make us all realize we're all humans and we have common goals and we have to go around better. Being in the same room with everybody is just saying the same thing. Makes that point. Yeah. Great. That, that was great. That was super helpful. I, 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 Sophie and I just took a whole bunch of notes that I know will let's turn our next three hour meeting into a four hour meeting. So, I think Greg would like, yeah, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I've been almost coming to the meeting now. I've been there twice. I hit the bottom and I said, I don't feel well. And everything I say is just going to be rude. So I don't know, and I, I'm not gonna uh, put a banner on my hands, but I do think people of color haven't been treated the same, and they aren't as treated as well. They're, it's, they, they don't have the same opportunity, no question. So I guess where I'm going with this is, you know, I'd like to hear why is this so important to people in a way, that would welcome people to join your uh, team. And I just don't see that. I think that, that I think the way things have gone for the last year, the way you presented it, you divided it. And you've lost support. And you got to change that. You can't keep forcing things. You, you need people to become involved in a positive manner. And, and I'm a pretty open person. If I don't feel welcome, I'm sure a lot of people. And I think that's a good thing. Can I address that? Yeah, go ahead. So, I want you to know, thank you for doing that. I appreciate yeah. that. And, you know, I want you to know, I talked for hours to Beth, Mike on the phone, Offie. I talked to a lot of people. In public meeting, one place, and I don't think that's an that would make anybody feel more love. And I, I think that there's that the, the racial justice was given a reputation, and that that reputation was was fought before it had done anything to the reputation. I really do. And I, I think that that's part of when I talk about people dividing us, there are people who 
hear certain words and then they interpret those words as the way they've been presented by me. And they're emotionally moving to me. And I think that's what we're all fighting. I think we're getting
for the select board to be uh, and we usually have a committee manage their own write their own bylaws that is essentially a problem with other But my lot of our rules to govern that are internal working. Well, honestly, most communities are pretty comprehensive. Yeah. So, for you to make your own bylaws, why are we doing that? Well, they asked if we would give our opinion. Does anybody have any concerns or issues? Otherwise, well, they are asking for your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so but what's the deal here? They're just looking for legitimacy by the board to read the bylaws. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, it, it's not something they're required to do uh, to this extent, but they're asking if we would. You, I think it would be fair for you to turn back and say that. It's not a matter of the board is usually involved with, or you know, they've asked for our approval of signature. We can give it to them. My only feedback is if they want long term members to be volunteers, they're members of the criteria that they can be served. But I think it's just up to that. Like, you have to commit, like, how it makes sense. If you don't do it, So does the board want to pass back the message that uh, you have no issues with it? Or it's not our practice to we're not getting the wrong way. I would. I would prefer not to sign. I'm not sure. Okay. We'll just send that back. That message. You got no issues with it? Some way wrong or you do some way to blame. Okay. Uh, historical society resignation and new members. Dean Lawrence has resigned after many years of Dean his West. service. Dean West. Sorry. My apologies to. Yeah, the, the wrong team. Uh, Dean West has resigned from the Historical Society. Uh, we'll post a vacancy. Uh, the Historical Society asks that there are any select board members. That's fair. We need something, right? Yeah. I'm not old enough to. First of all, let's uh, look forward to play with Dean West's resignation. Yeah, we'll a lot of good news. We got a motion to accept the resignation. Go a second. Any okay. other discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? We thank Dean for yeah. his yeah. to yeah. send him a little thank you. Oh, oh, coordinate us with uh, Rose Marishi. Okay. Uh, but if you guys have to that. Oh, and I think this may be the new member of this coming from Duncan because. He was, when he was our town administrator, he was the liaison uh, with the uh, Historical Society for the board. As he's no longer associated with the town other than serving on the Historical Society, if there is any interest from any board members, he would step aside and then he would put his name in for the opening from the dean, uh, basically just flipping chairs. So, I guess the question is for the board is, is there anyone who would like to have a representation on the board and is willing to serve? Is there a free pie? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Working. yeah. yeah. You're there long enough on Wednesday, I'm sure have a lunch. <laughs> you don't meet the age requirement? <laughs> Okay, so I, I guess uh, not sensing a huge amount of enthusiasm here. Uh, we'll put a posting to the position. 
Okay. Uh, we had something on the Green Mountain Byway. Yep. Uh, the Green Mountain Byway is has asked if we would uh, provide a letter of support for uh, advisor for veterans when they are managing roads, uh, especially Group 15 that's going to be under construction. So, uh, to all along the Green Mountain Byway, when they're replacing guardrails, to replace them with, with a box beam guardrail instead of the uh, W smile guardrail. Uh, the box beam guardrail are, uh, I mean, they're, they're a little steel box on post. Uh, they're much smaller, they take up less area, uh, but they tend to be a little bit shorter. Uh, in terms of their distance from the road, so they're a little bit better for sharing the road with cyclists. Uh, they tend to be involved in less uh, less fatal accidents. They tend to be safer uh, if there are auto accidents, um, and they provide better visibility uh, for seeing the scenery from the road uh, as you pass by. They're, they're quite a bit small. Going for a single yeah, and they're seeking a letter. It's a letter of support. Um, the state's putting them up in quite a few places, so the state's equipped uh, to do this and, and in a pretty good position to. I don't think we're moving towards these locally. Uh, they are more expensive, um, and they are um, considerably more money to maintain. Than the W style because they, uh, by and large, can't be uh, straightened and replaced. Or they have to be replaced or straightened more often, and uh, they are harder to shape. So we tend to work in larger segments. Um, so they tend to maintenance on them a little more expensive. Uh, so we'd be asking the state the town itself would not be making a similar. What's board's thoughts there? They look really nice. I've actually noticed them in my travels on where this you know, so moving. So many yeah. request signed by uh, I can sign it on behalf of the town. Okay. We have motion, do we have a second? I can get a second motion with I. Why are you hesitating? Well, he dies. 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 I'm sure everybody here's been to Colorado. They don't have where they guardrail at all. So th this wouldn't be installed in any new guardrails. This is just yeah, I know. I know. I'm just saying you know, when they're replacing guardrails in that area, they would replace them with uh, the box beam rather than the W spot. That's unfortunate. We'll have other highways. I don't. No, I'm not. I'm not against. That. I just I don't feel educated enough to make a recommendation. We are. Uh, we referred, but uh, uh, we still maintain a membership. We have asked the uh, Johnson Works to be our representative on that committee, and they have. Okay, cool. uh, just by the way, the way their meetings and everything come up, uh, they made this request this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, was when it got to, to us, so right. there wasn't really time to prepare for it. No, I'm sensing there's not supporting Johnson. ATV. ATVs, kind of a couple of emails um, from folks who live on uh, roads where uh, ATVs are not equally black. Um, and so, uh, now, what I do, and would you please bring it to the slide? So, I expect the first slide for it. 
um, I offered previous folks that um, they should make a complaint to the sheriff's department because even if it doesn't feel all that fruitful, at least you can get a record of it. If you can get a license plate, a photograph of a license plate or a license plate number, and then we can have law enforcement follow up with those riders. Uh, um, so no, we would also follow up with the, the club just to make sure that our, our signage in the community is robust enough so people know they can't be driving on um, roads that they shouldn't be driving on. Scott? Yeah, um, I was actually one of the people who reached out. He was, I wasn't going to get it. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> I don't have any issues with EVs. Um, my sister has a lot of her horse bar with working EVs, and I use my work as well. I think they're super cool. I don't recreate them, I don't think I see it. But no issue with grenade EVs. I do have an issue with grenade EVs on highways. Um, because I know what I have to go through with my own vehicles to register them and have them inspected, they're very legit. Um, I'm a little concerned because Clayfield is well marked with no ATVs on um, the second order, but yet we were started already. And I was really hoping um, that I would get full support from the town and the select board um, to make a, a pretty, you know. I don't want to use the word aggressive, but you know, a statement to the club that we need to amend the ordinance sooner than later because I think the behavior is going to inspire a lot of people. And I do have to make a note that they were probably a lot slower than vehicles that travel on a though, but you know, that's sort of a joke because it's a race track most of the time. So, but just a heads up that it's happening. It's only been a few weeks since the council opened up the EPDs. But, you know, we're already crossing the phone. We'll, we'll pass that on to the club um, because they certainly don't want ATVs going on the highways that they're not even authorized because uh, that you know, hurts their own cases. But, uh, and I, I did witness probably the same one you did. Um, but by the time I get to the road, I can't see anything other than helmets coming up the road. But um, yeah, I, I did note that uh, they, they seem to be going very slow, and, uh, but they shouldn't be on that highway. It was not opened up. So. Well, thank you for uh, hearing. Yep. Go ahead. While we're talking about it, I did bring River Road. Through the one going towards Bowling Hill. Um, I witnessed three ATVs on Robert Street, I went Robert Street with our plants, and they turn on the river road to eat. That they're supposed to go up to Upper Front, correct? Is that what they mean? Uh, river Road is. East would probably open anyhow because that's the dirt road. Just beyond the well, well, down. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's not dirt until it'll be built around. You know, all the way to the right. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I don't know. If, I'm not even sure if they can mark any roads over the years that we close it over or close mm -hmm. any of them. They last I knew they weren't even going to publicize that side of the town. Yeah. Would be okay. So it's probably just the locals that are using. I had never seen that before at all, but I will say that they were going slow. We always is friendly to send to the state that way. And we can bring that up to them as well. Okay. Who uh, was we? Or it was me. What's that? Who was, was calling for the ATV club? Brian us. Unless we have any further items, I will kind of change motion to move to executive session. Well, we've gone to executive session to discuss evaluation of personnel as allowed by one BSA to the three A. Motion, we have a second. Second. Motion, second. We have a discussion. 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.